Hello all, welcome to another video. For this video, we will be going through step by step how we can cross compile a Windows DLL file on a Kali system. DLL files are usually the preferred type of payload to deliver to a victim's Windows machine as it allows proxy execution via another binary, usually a signed and certified legitimate Windows system binary. This is especially useful when the environment has some sort of application whitelisting enforced, which means that your payload files in EXE format will definitely not work. Once we cover that in the hands-on demonstration later on in the video, it will clear things up more. As shown in the screen here, this is a template C++ file that will display a message box when executed. We have exported the function name hello world, which means that the function hello world will be available for external programs to call and execute it. Let's cross compile it on our Kali system and generate a Windows DLL file. Cool, let's transfer it over to our Windows machine. One way we can execute a DLL file is via the runDLL32.exe legitimate Windows binary. Let's execute the DLL file with runDLL32. We can do so by specifying the DLL name and the exported function name. In this case, it will be hello world. Great, it worked. Now, let's get started. This GitHub repo over here is highly recommended. It provides various references on how you can execute shell code. The code here will compile to EXE program, which is not what we want. However, we can use the sources here to create our own DLL payload. All credits belong to the author here, so be sure to check out this amazing GitHub repo. The link to the GitHub page will be provided in the video's description. First, we will need a process injection technique in our DLL template file. Let's use the simple loader source over here. We can copy everything in the main function and paste it in our template DLL file. Let's leave everything as it is and try to compile it. This will not work because we haven't modified the shellcode for our own IP address. This is fine for now so we can just leave it as it is. So, it was able to compile successfully. Let's transfer the generated DLL payload file over to our Windows machine. As expected, it is being detected as malicious. This is because of the MSF Venom shellcode. Let's empty out the shellcode and recompile it again. Alright, let's transfer this to our Windows machine. As shown in the screen here, this time round, there is no detection. This means that the technique to execute the shellcode is okay, but the shellcode itself is being detected. Let's try to encrypt the shellcode and see if this will bypass Windows Defender. Now, let's go over to the AES encryption GitHub repo. The AES C++ source code is shown over here. It seems that the author has taken the process injection technique here to another level by utilizing the nt functions in nt dll instead. This means that instead of calling the functions such as virtual alloc, virtual protect from kernel32.dll, it is going one level lower by calling the same functions in nt dll directly instead. We don't have to do this, so we can just ignore this part and keep it simple as it is. What we want here is the AES decryption function and the lines of code that are related to the AES decryption routine. Let's copy the AES decrypt function along with all necessary include files and library statements.
okay, this should be it. Let's try to compile it. Let's try to fix the compilation errors. Okay, great. It is able to compile now. What we need next is the Python script that will print out the AES encrypted payload and the AES key to decrypt it. Let's copy the Python script available here. The Python script will basically take in a raw shellcode file and perform AES encryption on it. It will then print out the AES encrypted shellcode which will be properly formatted along with the key that we will need to include in our template C++ file. Alright, now we have the AES script. Let's generate a reverse shell with MSF Venom. Let's execute the Python script and point it to the beacon.bin raw payload file. Let's copy the output, both the AES encrypted shellcode and the AES key into our template C++ file. Since we are using the variable name payload, let's change the AES shellcode variable name to payload as well. Awesome, let's compile it. Now, let's transfer it to our Windows machine. As shown on the screen here, there is no detection now. Let's try to execute the DLL file with run DLL32 again. Amazing, it worked. We managed to get a reverse shell with the DLL payload file, bypassing Windows Defender completely with all of the features turned on. Now, let's try it again with a Metabriter payload. Let's generate a Metabriter reverse shell with MSF Venom. Alright, now let's execute the Python script again to get the AES encrypted payload and the AES key. We will need to copy the AES encrypted shellcode and paste it in our template C++ file. As shown in the screen, it is very big. This is because it is a stitchless payload. Pasting this output in via the nano editor will take some time. The waiting time is edited out. Great. Let's not forget to copy and paste in the AES key as well. Let's recompile the C++ file with the newly inserted Metabriter payload and generate a new DLL file. Let's transfer it to our Windows machine and execute it again with run dll32. Nice, it worked again. As shown here, we are able to get a functional Metabriter reverse shell as well. Having a DLL payload is really useful. For example, we can easily modify the exported name of the DLL to have another legitimate Windows binary to execute it. One such example is by changing the exported name from Hello World to be DLL Register Server. We can then use another legitimate Windows binary such as the Reg Server 32, REG SVR32 Windows binary to execute the DLL file. 
the REC Server 32 Windows binary will execute the DLL register function within a DLL file. So if your DLL payload file contains an exported function named DLL register server, the REC Server 32 Windows binary will execute it. Awesome, it worked again. This is amazing. As shown over here, it is really useful and practical to have a DLL payload file instead of an EXE payload file. Few years back, it was really popular to use Microsoft Teams to perform proxy execution via a DLL file. This allowed persistence on a compromised machine as whenever the victim turns on his computer, Microsoft Teams will be auto-started and the DLL payload will then be executed. What this means is that, basically, Microsoft Teams will look for a number of DLLs on the system to load and it was identified that some of the DLLs are missing. You can simply rename your DLL payload file to the DLL that Microsoft Teams is trying to load and Microsoft Teams will help you execute your DLL payload. This article shown over here explains the issue and also provides some useful reference on how you can identify missing DLLs loaded by other programs. The link to the article will be shared in the video's description, so be sure to check it out. Alright, I will be concluding the video here. I hope you all have enjoyed the content. Please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will really help out the channel a lot. Thanks all, I appreciate it. See you all soon in the next video. Bye.